Bonjour, bonsoir, dear friends, and welcome to JCB Live. Today, live out of Yonville, our JCB wine bar with our friend Pat Pingitore, Italian descent, of course, a little pizzazz. But at the same time, he is a Quebecois. He speaks French fluently. He's one of the most amazing doctors, and you'll hear why. And at the same time, has had an incredible life very cultural, fascinatingly international, and he runs an amazing organization here in Northern California, the Knights of the Vines. We will show how it works and what it is, and maybe some of you may want to be part of it because this is the time that you join community, friendship, you share the love of food, the love of wine, well, the love of everything. So, very successful man living in the heart of Napa Valley with his beautiful wife. He had many children. He'll tell us about them and it's going to be a very fun time with a doctor. And I could tell you, if you want to look like he does, you have to drink a lot of this baby. Hey Pat, bonjour. Did I kill someone? <laughs> Bonjour, Jean-Charles. Comment ça va? Très bien, merci. Welcome, Pat. I'm merci. so honored. Quel plaisir. Le plaisir est pour moi. Vive le Québec <laughs> libre! <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want to, we don't want to do that. <laughs> and Great to see you. Great to see you. And thank you for coming down from your hill. It's a pleasure. Very happy to get away. Hey, tell me, what took you... Well, let's have a toast first. Yes. To the world, to the Knights of the Vines, to all your friends in the world. Maybe you want to give them a toast yourself. Yes, to all of the Knights of the Vine people that are watching and perhaps also those in the International Federation of Wine Brotherhoods, of which we will speak. And most of all, my family. Um, you are the reason I am who I am. Here's to your longevity and... Cintani, as we say in Italian. Cintani! Cintani. So Pat, born Italian, Francophile, Canadian, and then American. Amazing. How does that feel? You, you know, have the best of it all. I, I, I agree with you. Um, you know, when you get to be uh, born and raised in a city like Montreal, yes. it really sets you up for um, what the world is all about. You know, the two solitudes has been written and, um, about the Quebec, the English and the French, and all of all what that meant, uh, and yes. growing up in a house where Italian and French were spoken before I even learned English. That's amazing. But then being educated in English uh, became the dominant language at home uh, for myself and my siblings. But I was very, very fortunate, and um, it set the tone for my life. Well, isn't Quebec one of the best place, and the best of both worlds, really, as you said, the two solitudes? Isn't it the best place of all world? And if you believe so, tell us why. Well, if I always tell my American friends, if you want to go to Europe, but you can't get across the pond, yes. go to Quebec. Yes. Go to Quebec City, go to Montreal, and you will see what international life can be like. Because, I mean, Montreal is one of the oldest cities in North America. That's St. It. Augustine is probably the, just the next one in North America, but Montreal is it. Um, and you will um, you'll realize a cultural experience um, like you won't anywhere else in North America. Yeah. Um, food is fantastic. Um, wines from all over the world, of course, are there. And there are, there are uh, boroughs of um, nationalities. There's the Greeks, the Italians, uh, the, the Indians from East Indians is what I'm referring to. Um, you name it, they're there. Yes. And so therefore, the, the variation of foods available there, it sets the tone for And it. why isn't it so important huh. to have so many nationalities and religion in one place, which I love and thrive from, but give us your perspective. Well, of course, it just teaches you that everyone is there and equal. They all have something to offer. They, they basically, uh, you experience um, things that you can't possibly understand That's right. until, you know, um, you get that uh, when you're around other people and other cultures. Very important. And what was, as we toast again, because, you know, we need to keep 
hydrated here yes. in Napa. The temperature has risen. It's over 90 today. <laughs> so what is the big learning of all that? Because, you know, you the man, as we will learn from all our friends, you will hear there's no one more international than you and, and what you do and how you function. What is important to be in that cradle of cultures? Well, I think you learn from an early early years that you can't take anything for granted. Yeah. Um, you know, when you consider what North America was created with, uh, all those influences um, really played a major role in why we are who we are. I always tell my friends and my family as well, I said, think about all of those people that left Europe yes. in the late 1800s, the early 1900s, when basically things really began. What courage those individuals had. Yes. I think of my grandfather, you know, um, 1904, 1905, going to, the, going to the shipyard saying, where's that boat going? It's going to, it's going to New York. I'm going there. Yeah. And with a one suitcase, he shows up, starts a life, and then goes back and forth between North America and Italy all of these years until finally the family can make it in 1923. I mean, the courage that that takes, I think we are bestowed in yes. North America with a sliver of a genetic population that is such. Yes. They're very, very entrepreneurial. They're very courageous. They're hardworking. They take nothing for granted. And that's what I, I think makes us who we are. And do you think it has a lot to do with that entrepreneurial, innovative, and creative mind? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, so you're taught early on, um, look, you know, nothing's going to be given to you. You've yeah. got to work hard for it. Oh, by the way, uh, we really can't afford college, so you're going to have to figure out a way of paying for that. Yes. And oh, by the way, you know, once you finish, you, you know, you should stay close to family. Not that you need to support us, but, and, and that my family did everything, and I was the oldest of four. Um, and we all kind of felt the same way um, from our parents to just continue yes. to work hard. And, and again, it's, it's the typical story, and we've got so many of us. Well, but it's a typical, phenomenal, and remarkable story. So how did you yourself, with your own children, succeeded to pass on the Quebecois culture, the Italian culture, the French culture, because you have those three, and then instill into them the American way of things? Well, it just became something you did every day. Um, yeah. You know, meals around the table were, mm -hmm. were mandatory for everybody. Um, you know, at an early age, my grandfather would say, Beej, Beej, which is slang for take it, take it. Yeah. Put a little ginger ale with the red wine. It's good. It's good for you. You know, I'm eight, eight or nine years old. That's how I learned to drink wine. And we've instilled in our, our children that, um, you know, that love of life and, and the respect for, yes. for what you have uh, on, the, on the table. Uh, I'm, re I'm reminded ever so much of a story. So I have a very good friend. He lives in Florida. We grew up together as, as, as uh, school buddies. And we're playing outside on the street. And my father goes, Pat, Pat, supper time. Come get cleaned up. And, and my friend says, okay, Pat, I'll see you tomorrow. And my father goes, no, 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 Tony, Tony, you come too. You come too. Because he knew that Tony, my friend, yeah. was living with his father and brother. But not mother and sisters were still back in Italy. And this I is in the, yeah, we're talking about the 60s. When my friend told me 30 years later, he says, that day when I walked in and saw your family of six sitting around a table ready to eat and you invited me in like it was nothing, no, my, or your father invited me in like it was nothing, I told myself then and there that that's what I wanted to aspire to. I wanted hmm. to have that in my life. And, you know, so it was not hard for my kids to learn that because it, it was just part of it. Um, the, the, the table. At the table. The energy of the table. Talking about that, let's, let's toast to all of us loving food and wine and people and loving to share. Absolutely. Yeah. And adding so, some travel to that. Oh, uh, and adding some travel, which we... But, Pat, I'd love for you to tell me what you think of this wine. I know you've had a lot. We've had a lot of it together. <laughs> we have on that boat. <laughs> it's always so wonderful, crisp and refreshing. Oh. Yeah. Um, it still has a little bit of the yeast yeah. that, that remains and makes it interesting. Um, yeah, you could, you could drink this. 
all evening. All day long, and I've seen you drink out of a Magnum, out of three liter, <laughs> out of nine liter. We won't share all the details, dear friends. So Pat, raised there, I'd love for you to tell us why you've chosen, at first, which I'm thrilled you are, because doctors are typically phenomenal wine lovers and they're listeners and they retain and they're incredible communicators for the world of wine. Why did you become a doctor and how did you use that to become who you are today? Oh, interesting question. Um, I knew I was always interested in a lot of different things. Yes. And when it came time to choose university and to choose a path, I was so lucky to have a high school teacher, I'll never forget him, his name was Eddie Quinto. Another so, Italiano. Another Italiano. He <laughs> says, you know, if you're not sure what to do, why don't you just keep yourself kind of broad-minded and do an arts program. You only need six sciences to get into medical school if that's really what you want to do. Huh. So yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Did that, made the grades, and fortunately was able to get into medical school. Well, you had the brain to, to be able to do that. If I would have tried, I would just have stayed in hard school. <laughs> oh, I doubt that's true. Um, so that enabled me to, I, you know, it, it was like less pressure. Because yes. Just, oh, I can do anything I want to from this, this path. Great advice for many of us who are questioning. Absolutely. Then you go to medical school, and now you've got to choose a specialty. Yeah. I couldn't choose a specialty. I loved to do so many different things. Uh, and I could see that in you because you, you have that sense of curiosity that makes you want to discover everything, right? Right. So I went into a kind of a family practice kind of setting where yes. I could learn a lot of things, a little bit about a lot of things, because uh, I loved sports medicine. I, I loved obstetrics. I loved all those things, but I knew I didn't want to paint myself into it. Uh -huh. So I never did. I always maintained that kind of ability to, uh, to make choices down the road. And even in my practice, of course, speaking Italian, my practice became really skewed because in Montreal, there are a lot of Italians. Um, and speaking French, you would anyhow. Yes. Because that's the official yes. language. So I wanted to, again, diverge a little bit and not be kind of stuck in a corner. Yeah. And so I always kept myself um, flexible. I only saw patients half a day a week, five days a week, and then went someplace else the other half days. Where would medicine. you go? Well, um, I went to um, uh, I went to a rehabilitation hospital to be a, a medical director for the floor. Um, I went to an Italian clinic that had only unilingual speaking people. I worked at a company called Hewitt Equipment, the Caterpillar yeah. Tractor Assemblers in Montreal, because they wanted an industrial doctor to make to make sure that prevented. Uh, damage to the hearing wow. and, and I was fortunate to be able to um, have an associate who was the doctor for the Montreal Expos baseball team. Oh, cool. And so I became one of the associate medical doctors for That's the baseball team. That's why you know how to throw the ball so yeah, well. You know, and you know, you got to go to 20 games a year with four tickets and imagine bringing your father to, uh, to a Montreal Expos baseball game, Amazing. sitting behind the dugout. Yeah, for um, sure. You know, um, it was it was just absolutely wonderful. So kept myself fairly fairly broad minded, um, and um, but even that kind of got stale. And this is when I decided I needed to to move into some area where I could be a little more entrepreneurial. And so I picked up and brought my family to Houston, Texas. Yes. So yeah. tell us, a, amazing, but very dairy. All your family is in Quebec. All your friends. You know, the Italian, the French, uh, enormous community, so I'm sure you, it was a big decision. It was, but my children were young enough yeah. um, uh, that uh, they were flexible and they were willing to do it. Um, you asked them? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and you surrounded were, with only ladies. That's right. Even the dog was a female. <laughs> Ooh. Um, so you had it very easy, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, we went to Houston and it was such a culture shock. Yeah. Going from Montreal to sure. Houston, Texas. The advice I was given by my first partner was, first of all, um, don't swear at anybody, don't honk at anybody because they carry guns in their trucks. Um, be careful of the roaches, they're so big you could saddle them. <laughs> um, and uh, don't exercise after 9 a.m. in the summertime because it's yeah. too hot. So, anyway, it, 
but you know that was the oil boom town but it was yeah. right around 83 when things crashed huh. and so it took us a little bit of time to to recoup all of that but again you know, you stick to it. So you worked in a business that was... It was another family doctor. Another family doctor. And we, we grew that practice to four or five doctors. Yeah. And then business was beginning to infiltrate us. And we decided instead of fighting the, the business of managed care, we decided to join managed care and mm. become part of it. And so Clever we could do move. it our way. We, were, we, we wanted to become our own bosses. You know, Yogi Berra once said... If you come to a fork in the road, yeah, take it. That's right. So if you stay and complain, and you, you'll never get anywhere. Just let's go down the path. Let's see how it goes. So that was a big decision for you as a doctor to make, to yeah. join that. Yeah. And over a two or three year period, I was able to transition to a complete uh, administrative role, yeah. left practice, um, which after the 15 or 20 years was not as difficult as I thought huh. um, because I was ready for something else. Um, and tell us what was that something else because I know you helped taking it public and yeah. it obviously became an enormous success so we, we had some really great friends um, and I you know you hit your wagon to people that you know and respect um, you can tell yeah. when people are honest and I was fortunate enough to meet um, an actuary his name is Herb Fritsch he was from from Nashville and he understood where medicine was going and how we needed to to become our own bosses. Uh, and we basically started a, a company that was enabling the doctors to get better contracts with the health insurers so that wow. they had more clout. And by the time we grew our company, there was 1,800 doctors in the city of Houston that were affiliated Are you serious? with these, what we call POTS, Physician Organized Delivery System. Wow. And it's a long story, but gradually um, people got interested in the business. Um, we grew it. We went to four or five other states. Uh, another company saw us and said, hmm, this is a very interesting model. It might make sense. They took some of the money off the table, but we had to stay for three to five years and follow their lead. Uh, eventually, we created our own insurance company, essentially. A Medicare insurance company, then called HealthSpring. Phenomenal. And, um, and it went public, It went course. public in 2005. And, um, and then you had, there, there was so much money to, to, to play with that you decided to buy wine no, and move to Napa Valley. I had already spent a lot of money on wine. <laughs> um, all of our trips that we took were all, always to California. We loved California. Yeah. Um, no matter when I came to, to get continuing education, I would try to find the courses that were here in San really? Francisco. And your wife identically loved it. Oh, yeah, and my kids. And I think we need to have a little toast to your wife who is with To Linda. Us. Linda is Linda. absolutely amazing. She and wanted to come and observe. I should have let her come. Of course. She's always welcome. Well, but before we move into the next stage of your life and this exciting movement that you're creating with food, wine, and sharing, tell us about, I know, I will let you a few time, a few moments before you're going to have to describe this very <laughs> unusual wine. Um, Eastern medicine, medicine, Give us your thoughts on all that, because you, you have a lot of great opinions. Uh, you're very good at always tell us you've got to prevent rather than cure. Of course. You know, I mean, I grew up in the, what they call the allopathic method yeah. of, of, of medicine. And um, uh, interestingly enough, the hospital where I trained was called the homeopathic hospital huh. um, in Montreal. Um, and we, we know that... Um, Medicine is so complex, we'll never know everything there is to know. Mm -hmm. We're getting knowledgeable, not more knowledgeable all the time as we explore, you know, the, the genetic codes of, yes. of our cells and of diseases. And for a long time, there's been other influences that have learned to somehow manipulate that. And yes. You know, that we know that mm -hmm. acupuncture is a wonderful aid for, mm -hmm. for different things. And I don't begin to espouse any knowledge about exactly all the pathways that they use or other other modalities of medicine. But uh, I think we need to always remain humble um, and understand that there's other people out there who, who are following different paths again. Yes. And as long as we keep listening to each other, we can probably find that common path that will lead to, to better health. And here we are in the middle of a pandemic that nobody knew what to do about. Um, you know, it's incredible that we're living in this 
for sure. Uh, in this situation. But what is um, what is your personal advice and secret to all of it? Because you very healthy yourself as well as your surroundings. Is there any few advice you would give to all our friends in general? Well, first this? of all, drink wine. Oh, so let's have another toast to that. For sure. Um, the Hippocrat commitment is always to wine, right? Always. You actually, when you get your degree, have a glass of wine next to it, right? You must, yes. Uh, no, I think we need to be, we need to be kind to our bodies. Um, you're not going to get away with abuses. Uh, and some of us are... Uh, unfortunately born with some traits that we must address um, yeah it isn't always guaranteed and um, as we get further along in our knowledge of, of genetics we'll know how to intervene but right now we know that there's some preventative measures out there that's right that everyone should avail themselves of there's no reason for I, I just cringe when I hear about people saying oh I'm gonna wait for the vaccine to be sure that it's really proven correct really you want it to why? Why? Just uh, get it done. I mean, you know, the technology has been around for a while. We've just manufactured it, but why would you wait? That's um, right. You know, I mean, could you imagine raising children today without the vaccines that we have today and, you know, running that, uh, that risk? Thank um, you for saying that. Uh, so, and I, I, I hope more people hear you because the Europeans of all, the French and the Italians, have been very... Many have been so skeptical about it, going in the streets and saying, we don't know, we don't know. You know, it's, it's unfortunate that a, you know, compl some complications have occurred with some of the vaccines. But again, it's such a minuscule That's right. percentage of the individuals. Uh, my, you know, my oldest daughter and son-in-law are in medicine, and we have all of these debates about, you know, what is appropriate, what is not appropriate. And I mean, and there, I mean, my son-in-law pointed out that do you realize there are more clots in women of childbearing age who are That's taking it. the birth control pill than are, are going to get the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. I mean, you know, let's let's be real. Well, and talking about this, Pat, you've been in the development of medicine and at the edge of it all your life. How amazing is it to develop something in one year and to get it out in the market? It's it's just incredible. I mean, shouldn't we be grateful of this? Uh, absolutely. I mean, we've got brilliant minds out there who've been yeah. working on this. They they had the technology ready to go, and you know, I mean, we got to hand it to our, our former administration. At least Operation Warp Speed did dedicate the money Amazing. that needed to be done yeah. to get this out in some fashion for, for all of sure. us to have. You know, now there's some countries, unfortunately, that have been very, very slow yeah. in their procurement. And, and in my home country, is suffering a surge um, well, right look now. At, look at mine, in France. Yeah, the, you know, because vaccines aren't widely enough available. Yeah. At least we knew to buy the, the, the millions and hundreds of millions of doses that we did. But boy, get vaccinated, people. I mean, yeah. that's how we'll get herd immunity. Um, For sure. You know, uh, it's too dangerous not to. Uh, it's too dangerous not to. And, and you couple that with a few glasses of wine and you're very, very safe. <laughs> so Pat, big wine, something totally different, dear friends. Yeah. And, and I know every time we serve a wine, it's a surprise. So the guest doesn't know what we're serving. Buena Vista Winery Tokai Ferment 2017. And I'll tell you why Buena Vista, because Pat is a fervent historian. <laughs> well, you are, and you love history. So we, we had to get you the first winery in California, Buena Vista. So Absolutely. We know you love the Hungarians as well as you have a lot of friends there. So that's what it is. Yes, absolutely. Wonderful. What do you think of it? Oh, it's, it's great. I mean, you know, the... the um, just, just the, uh, the nose of that essence. It's almost like a Gewurz in, in terms of the, uh, yeah. you know, the, the. I'm trying to think of what the right terminology. The fragrance is, is, is aromatic, um, but it's also smooth and yeah. and uh, soft and long finishing for a white wine. So we make it in Tokai. Can you believe it's made with a great winery named Patricius Winery? in the heart of Hungary, and uh, we created that sisterhood, you know, Buena Vista, Sonoma, but more importantly, Sonoma Tokai, and this is really the essence of it, dear friends. This is one of the oldest wine in the world. It's beautiful. For and you. interestingly enough, um, the International Federation, of which we're a part, were there in Absolutely. 2010. So we will right be talking region. about yeah. that, Amazing. but I'd love to ask Dr. 
Pingitori. 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 How do we say it better? Pingitori. Pingitori. You see, I did a pretty good job, yeah. didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What inspires you? Oh, boy. That's a loaded question. Yes, because you have so many fields of interest. You know, to me, what inspires me is, is watching those success stories among the people who have had so many obstacles in yeah. their way. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, for people who it's not easy, they've got that determination, they just said that stick to if I could use that for word sure. that I'm making up. Um, you know, that to me, when I see those success stories, it's, you know, I mean, there's the Jean Charles and there's mm -hmm. the Gina Gallus, but there's mm -hmm. those little guys and yeah. little girls, you know, yes. who somehow, despite everything that's in their way, make it they make it through you know and i know succeed. who you're referring to oh i do have a personal uh, of course oh, of course yeah, yeah. Didn't, didn't think you were going to bring that up but so you've oh. met you've met jill phenomenal <laughs> so pat has linda his beautiful wife of 50 years by the way yes so we summer. should thank you we should well we will have dinner with claire we've said it and um, we're going to have a great dinner to celebrate half a century together. That's pretty commanding. Thank you very much. How could she stay so long with an <laughs> Italian like that? <laughs> well, that's his half French. That's why. That's she... right. The softer side. <laughs> and then you had three daughters. Three daughters, And yes. one of them is an amazing inspiration. Yes. Um, share a personal story. So we moved to Houston, Texas in, in uh, January of 1983. And my wife is eight months pregnant. And I don't ask me why we decided that, that was a good idea. But, you know, the group, I, the group I joined said, you need to come now because it's, it, it's, you're, needed, you're needed. So I was commuting back and forth for a couple of months. We move and my Jill, my youngest daughter, is born in February of 1983. And, oh, surprise, surprise, she's Down syndrome. Yeah. But healthy. Yes. No heart problems, no GI problems. You know, it's a shock. Um, my wife and I, Roman Catholic, we wouldn't have done anything if we had known before. Exactly. Um, you would not have done anything anyhow. No, we would have. We would have brought Jill into this world no matter what. We are so fortunate to have had Jill in our lives yeah. all this time. Ask her sisters. Um, ask my cousins. Mm -hmm. uh, her cousins, excuse me. Some of whom have been so inspired as to become special ed teachers yes. uh, or, or um, create programs for special needs. Um, Jill has continued to grow. She's now 38 years old. She reads music and plays piano. She's into social media and gets into trouble all the time because she's got too many friends on Facebook. Um, she, she works part-time um, at Lixit, but they've now put a lot of people off uh, because of COVID. She's living in a community yeah. uh, here in Napa called Moving Forward Towards Independence. It's a community of well, about 40 adult mm -hmm. men and women who live as independently as they can with proper supervision. Uh, we've offered her to come back home. Uh, she came back home at the beginning of the COVID because they didn't really know how to, to manage this. And after a month or two, she said, when can I go back? Yeah. Uh, she was pacing the house, just wanting to be back in her, That's right. in, with her friends. Um, that's who inspires me. I mean, she turned an internship that I got her in Houston into a a, a permanent part-time job. That's amazing. Just because she learned keyboarding, because she learned the skills that she needed to maintain yeah. a job, and with all of her deficits, you know. Uh, it, and and what does that teach us as human beings? You can overcome anything you That's right. you want to. Um, you just must continue to believe in yourself. Uh, you must continue to work hard and uh, take the opportunities that are that are passed your way. That's right. And does she has she made you another person that you were not meant to become? I th I think she's made us all. Yeah. Our family has become better people. Yes. Because we have had we've had Jill in our lives. For sure. Um, she has made us uh, so much more um, aware of. Not everyone basically shares the same ideas, the same skill That's set, it. and you just have to be open to that. You have to be right. cognizant of the fact that they all deserve a chance. Um, just because they didn't answer you right away doesn't mean they're rude. 
perhaps they, they're on the spectrum, you know. Um, and they processing autism, the information differently. And they don't process it. Yeah. That's right. So I think it's, it's made us all feel very, very fortunate um, and much more sensitive. Not that, you know, we needed a wake-up call. Uh, we've yeah. been very fortunate in our lives. But again, that made it so much easier for us to continue and persevere. That's right. And what we did. And we met Jill, as you know, Gina and I, we connected with her so much on arts and many other topics that it's so exciting to see. Yeah. 38 years old now. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And I'll, yeah, I'll never forget the day, the, 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 the gala yes. that we had at Raymond when we inducted Gina. And Gina was sitting beside me. And of course, you had risen to make a toast and I had welcomed the new members. And my daughter, Jill, sitting at a table with 60 people, yeah. knocked her glass and said, I want to make a toast. And Gina grabbed my arm. She goes, I said, yeah, it's, it's OK, it's OK. Just watch. You know? Yes. And she made, she made a toast. I mean, that's and it was an emotional, phenomenal toast yeah. that I could, yeah. I could recite again. She was <laughs> fabulous. Yeah. She was fabulous. And it's so great that you know, the community is embracing you know, differences. And, that all along she's become who she is. So that's why we all need to be very grateful to be here. And all being different. Absolutely. Absolutely. If we're all the same, it would be very boring. It's like this wine. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. So wow. Pat, I want to now maybe stand up and I think make a wish because there's something in your life besides being the amazing man that you are, because you really are, and we became friends, Pat and I, instantaneously, I need to tell you, at an event, wine event. Yeah. Totally by pure chance, and I think, to your point, destiny brings people together. Or we born, all of us, with different abilities to bring us together, a different field, different, you know, geographical location. We now are together, and we had an amazing time. So I think, I propose we stand up, and we have a toast. Because, dear friends, we're going to become now. Here we are. There we are, Pat. Look at Transformed. this. Transformed. <laughs> Look at this beautiful, gorgeous evolution. What a nice escape. Thank you. Are you part of the Three Musketeers? <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. So, dear friends, I'm going to ask Pat. What is that beautiful attire all about? Because I hope you agree, he looked charming, but now he looked very, very paramount as the king of France. <laughs> Interesting you should say that. Um, this, this is the regalia of the Brotherhood of the Knights of the Vine of America. Um, and we actually date back to the uh, Chevalier Giuseppe back in the 14th century in Montpellier. Yes. Uh, that's the origins of our brotherhood. Uh, actually, brotherhoods have existed uh, since the 12th century, I think. Uh, Bizier, France, was the first one that's right. who had a brotherhood way back in the 1100s. Um, in any case, the Brotherhood of Knights Divine in America consists of about 15 groups of people in chapters, we call ourselves. I happen to be the commander of the San Francisco Bay Area chapter of which Jean-Charles is, is a supreme knight. Thank you. I'm very honored, dear friends. I'm not wearing because obviously the Grand Master is here, so I'm, I'm obeying my, my forehead is on the marble. <laughs> uh, our chapters are spread across the country. We have, we have about seven in, in, in California, actually. Um, but we also have um, chapters in Houston and Austin, Texas. Uh, Memphis, Tennessee, North Carolina, the nation's capital, Washington, right. D.C., Virginia. We have one in Arizona. Um, I hope I'm not forgetting any. We have the seven in California, um, starting in Lodi, of course, which is a, a wonderful area, um, very active chapter. Uh, we have Lake Tahoe um, between them and, and Sacramento, where we have our chancellery chapter. That's yes. your origin, origin of our uh, group in 1964 was started uh, in Sacramento. Mm. Um, and then we, we have us, uh, here we are in the San Francisco Bay Area, Monterey, Orange County, and Los Angeles. I think that's the 15, if I forgot one. That's pretty I'm impressive. Afraid. Yeah, 850 people, like-minded. It's not all winemakers. Um, as a matter of fact, most of them are not winemakers. They're just people who love wine. 
Um, and our ambition, our, our uh, raison d'etre, if you will, is to uh, expose uh, people in our regions to the wines and vines of the areas where we have chapters. Uh, educate them on, on wine, um, bring them new, uh, new wines that they haven't heard, bef heard of before. Uh, everyone knows Napa Valley is a, is a difficult place to operate. Everyone knows the big boys. But we like to find the little guy too, the yeah. one, the little, or the little little girl who's who's got you know three or four hundred cases production, but has a phenomenal um, a phenomenal wine. So we try to find those little wineries and bring our members to to them uh, at times. Um, we have five to six events per year. Um, the Houston chapter has sometimes ten or twelve events a year, but they're low key. They're small. Lodi, I think, has a, a, a an event now that. Um, COVID is abating. Uh, once a month, they go from winery to winery in the Lodi area and ask each winery uh, to give member member discounts for that one night for the members that show That's up. That's right. Um, again, it's got to be a win-win. We don't expect wineries to give away the wines, but we want them to benefit from our participation. Um, the key, though, to success, the success of the Brotherhood of Knights of Vine, um, I should say, we have three categories of, of membership. We have basically a knight and gentle lady. And we're having problems with this generation accepting the term gentle lady. <laughs> we're going to have to go back Maybe. to the bylaws and come up with a better name because I've had more than one um, potential uh, prospective, prospective gentle lady say, can we come up with a different name? And I said, well, I'm not sure. Well, we could call them fabulous ladies. Fabulous ladies, I guess. Uh, anyway, so we have gentle ladies or knights and we have master knights and ladies. And those are folks that are a little more um, into the wines, they're usually usually winemakers or marketers or uh, have something more to offer. And then our um, our, our supreme knights and, and ladies are, are of the ilk uh, that we have sitting right here. Oh, thank uh, you. People who basically have contributed so much to to wine, um, you know, in the, not only in their area but in across across the country, um, and their their whole lives. Uh, is inspiring other people with wine. So that's that category. Actually, Jean Charles uh, has also received the Diplôme d'honneur yeah. from the International Federation that I'm going to talk about uh, in a minute uh, because he's contributed, it contributed internationally Thank you. Uh, to the benefit of wine. Which is frame on Wapo Hill. I should actually bring it right here Next time. To, to the lounge so everybody can see it because I'm very honored. And, and before we go to the international, mm -hmm. I would love to ask you a question. That is, I think, another inspirational question of how did you get involved from being a doctor to a phenomenal, yes, wine and food lover, people lover, serving your community, such an amazing personality. Why the Knights of the Vine and, and how did that happen at first? Um, I was fortunate enough to have known Again, as much as I told you about the international quality of the city of Montreal, when I moved to Houston, there were a lot of international people there as well. Yeah, for sure. Specifically from South America, uh, from India, um, and uh, in, in Europe, who had gone there because of the medicine yes. in Houston. Houston is an incredible medical center. Yes. And so I Ooh. was um, friends with many wine lovers from that international community. Not that Texans don't like wine, they, they love their wine, for sure. for sure. And there was a chapter, a Houston chapter of the Knights yep. of the Vine that was there in Houston and in 1986, three or four years after moving there. I thought, wow, what a great opportunity to be able to experience for sure. wines from different parts of the, of the country and of the world than to join this, this chapter. So that's how I got involved. And I, uh, I, I stayed with them right until the time that I moved to, uh, to California in 2004 and five. Fortunately, there was a group here and I just transitioned to this group. And then and they elected you the, the man in charge. Gradually, I decided to take the leadership role in this, in this chapter. Yeah, but this is amazing though, because, you know, again, we'll go on the international side, but what does it do to people? Because the power of bringing people together is amazing. Don't you think? Uh, it, it's, it is absolutely amazing. I mean, you can, at an event, and I know that, you know, the alcohol loosens 
people and they get they get a little little less intimidated and 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 they, they begin to share more information uh but when you have something common yes that you love yes food and wine you already have something something there to share that's it and then you begin to get into the details of things and you get other people's ideas uh well next time why don't we try a boat ride on the bay that's right okay oh all of a sudden someone knows someone who has a boat that's been sitting idle for so long but now that you know we can't we're going to find a wine a little winemaker yes and bring them on the boat and go on the bay someone else has an idea of a, of, of a pig roast or so it, all the ideas yes. that are shared and again it it brings different wines to that event yes uh, so we can continue and great to people and together great people. To, it's just, it's to exchange to be together it's just wonderful you make lifelong friends um obviously through the through the group here yes and, and all, around. all around so tell us about the the world because you belong to the world it's so, a big deal and it's interesting that the brother of the knights divine was one of the original charter members of the International Federation of Wine Brothers, same year, um, 1964. <clears throat> and they had a similar kind of mission, was to share the wines of the world with everyone that they could. Mm -hmm. So it was a natural evolution. And the great idea came up of, let's have a different country host all of the other countries once every year, once every two years. In a, in a great experience uh, from that region. And that has been, for me, one of the most remarkable things of this yeah. organization. We've been to so many phenomenal places. And so, yeah, you can go to the UK, as we were discussing earlier. And the UK, when we went there in 2008, wasn't really known for a lot of great wines. Their sparkling was terrific. Yes. But what they did, and again, it's that spirit of let's make this special. They decide to make it a commonwealth of wine experience. That's it. So here we were in London, and we were having wines from Australia, South Africa, Canada. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was phenomenal. Yeah. We had lunch in the House of Lords. We went punting on the Cambridge, wow. you know, punting on the, on the river. Uh, they just, the, each country wants to outdo themselves because they experienced the previous Congress. Yeah. And, of course, I want to do better than that. Which you did when you hosted the with your the world. help. With your help, we we actually raised the bar. Thank you. Uh, but you know that the following Congress was held in Macedonia. Imagine a country like Macedonia yeah. hosting the world. They did an incredible job. Yeah, robust wines for sure. Absolute marvelous. The sites, ancient Roman ruins, new wineries with modern technology. Mm -hmm. How it? I mean, wine tour tourism does does a little bit of exposure, but that kind of depth uh, yes. you don't get unless you're part of an international wine brotherhood yes. that gets you into the places that nobody else can go. I'm with you. That's unbelievable. So the Knights of the Vines have brought a lot to you personally and to Linda, of course. It, you know, it has basically kind of fed our our, our last passion, besides yes. food, wine, and family, travel. Yes. Uh, and so we go uh, wherever in the world that we can Um, and it's not always with food and wine, but we've been fortunate enough to have now visited pretty much all of the continents. And we try to bring a little bit of, 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 of wine and, and food, uh, food for sure, and, and the wines whenever it's appropriate uh, to our travels. Yes. And of course, every time we know that you're taking a tour uh, up the Thank Seine you. or down the Rhone, uh, we're signing up for that. And it's always important, dear friend, to have a doctor with you. <laughs> so, Pat, we won't go into that details, but he saved one of our wonderful members down in the road a few years ago. You were not even in your pajama. You were, you know, almost, almost asleep, but you woke up to yeah, help. Yeah, you don't, you don't know the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll let you know one day. <laughs> we'll let you know one day. But I was, uh, no, I was not, I was no longer dressed. And um, my wife will never let me forget it. But. but that was fun. And he saved one of our members who almost fell off of the boat. So yeah. we'll tell you the story another time. Okay. But Pat, so tell us as far as how people can inquire or eventually join, because I know you want potentially more people. And if you do, yeah. we should actively think about it because 
It's so exciting. I go to many of the events and it's always original, unique. Food and wine is spectacular. But I would say even more importantly than that is the people you meet. People, yeah. And again, people from all walks of life yeah. um, who, who want to enjoy each other and enjoy the experiences. Actually, this, the, the the website is very easy. It's kov.org. Yeah. Um, K-O-V for Knights of the uh, Vine. Knights of the Vine. kov.org. Go on the website. There's actually an application yeah. um, on the website uh, if, uh, if you wish to join. And the national office, which is here in Santa Rosa, will direct you to the, uh, the chapter that's appropriate mm-hmm. for, for you. Um, there are many benefits. Not only are you a member of that chapter, but when you're a, knight, uh, a member of the Knights Divine, anywhere you travel in the United States, you are automatically invited to anything that they're doing as well. So you mm. have instantaneously. Huge benefit. So if you're going to Monterey, to Carmel, you, you have potentially some events. And you're invited to the international events that are happening as well through the, yeah. because that's what one of the things that the international does. Um, the Federation does not allow people who are not member, members of their that's right. brotherhoods to attend because there's too many people who want to go. So. And under your group, you have as well the Commanderie of Bordeaux. Well, the Commanderie of Bordeaux. There, I mean, there's, there's 50 brotherhoods that's right. from 15 different countries. That are indirectly related to you. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Chateau Neuf du Pape uh, are, are, are part of the international. So you, you become, by extension, um, brotherhoods with them. I'm just thinking we should really uh, have, dear friends, as many of you are watching, if you have an interest in the chat or in an email, let us know and we'll provide more information from Pat if he's looking for people to join and, and we can sponsor as well, right? Yes, usually the chapter commander can 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 approve Great. of the individual uh, member being uh, proposed. If they don't know them, they may interview them over the phone, um, obviously. But it's uh, it's not really very complicated. If you love food, if you love wine, yeah, you want to bring people and together. you're clo- you know, and, and you, you're like this kind of thing. Um, oftentimes, some of the chapters have a um, a guest list mm-hmm. to try it out for six to twelve months. I think the Lodi chapter even has a squire category. They're not a knight yet, but they're a squire for a year. I love it. So they get invited to the uh, to the to the events as a squire, and then after a year, they have to move on to. The and event. people do know a lot about wine, like Pat. So Pat, tell us about what we're drinking. Wow, this this wine is so we so robust. It's got so many things going on. Yes, we and we brought I mean, wines of major history. So this one is in gratitude to the founding member of Buena Vista, the Count Harasti. This one is to what he brought to the U.S. and the Foundation of California, which is... Oh, Zinfandel? Yes! Mm-hmm. Well, as That's a base. A, as a base, yeah. I mean, this is, this is it's got the spices and the, the, the boldness. Mmm. Delicious, delicious. And we called it the Countess. The Countess. Because she loves Zinfandel, in honor of her husband, the Count, who is known, dear friends, to have brought... Zinfandel to California, of course, and to the United States from Italy. So we had to have your Primitivo. Primitivo. That's where it comes from, according to the the, DNA. So this one is Primitivo, Primitivo, not Mm -hmm. from the Croatian uh, clone that uh, others consider as a Maybe you'll know how to trace the DNA better than we do. (laughs) (laughs) So, Pat, one, a few more questions. What's your dream, if you had one? Dream. Which you, I know you have many. You know, I've been so fortunate in my life that, you know, if tomorrow was my last day on earth, uh, I would say, boy, I feel like I've, I've done whatever I've wanted to do. I don't think I've left too many stones unturned. Um, I, you know, I would obviously miss, miss, miss my family the most. Um, my dream is for f- people to start caring for one another again. Yes. Um, you know, uh, there's so much that's going on right now that's ugly. Um, I want to see people revert back to what made us a great country and is taking care of one another. Um, just remembering that uh, we not we all don't have the same abilities, but we're all contributing something. And if you take the time to get to know those individuals, you'll be more than rewarded. Um, mm. I, that's my dream is that we get back to civility. Yeah. 
back to sharing um, and, and caring for one another. Love it. Yeah, I, I, I have a similar dream as you do for sure. And now what message would you want to communicate to, to the world, to all the Knights of the Vines? Because <laughs> we're going to play and replay this amazing time together as you're a fearful leader of the organization. What, what message at large, and it could be on any topic you wish? Well, I think for uh, all the members of the Knights of the Vine, all you wine lovers out there, thank goodness we hope that this is behind us and we get back to doing the things that we love. I know many of you have already begun uh, based on where you are. We look forward to getting And, and I don't mean to interrupt no. as I am, but I want to commend you as well, Pat, for doing virtual tastings and virtual events. Yes. We did some together. You did one with Gina as well, which yes. is great. Yeah. And many of you came from your dining room or kitchen or yeah. living room. It was awesome. Thank you for that. You know, and this whole idea of virtual tasting, it's not really for everyone, but you realize how much we've been able to get into your living rooms, some people that you never otherwise would meet, and yeah. not to bring up someone else, but next month we're going to be inviting um, Ellen Shoup Great. from Long Shadows yes. uh, because how do we get people to Walla Walla? Of course. It's a little hard. Exactly. So uh, we're going to have Long Shadows uh, come to you, and so that's watch for that invitation because I think there's a place for what we've learned of course. in this past year and a half. And it's nice to do it. It well. is. It is. It's, it's an hour and a half or, yeah, or less it's of different. fun together. It gets you some wines that you wouldn't normally have. And so to the Knights of Vine, I think we're back uh, even better than before because of what we've learned. To the people at large, boy, there's so many opportunities in the world. Just never give up. Just keep going down those paths. Take the help that you can get. Don't give up. Um, you can you can accomplish everything you want in life by just sticking with it. Um, don't just don't sell, sell yourself short. I love it. Thank you, Doctor, My Professor pleasure, Jean Charles. Hey, and Grandmaster. How do we say? I'm, I'm not the Grandmaster. That's Buddy Hagner. I don't want to take Buddy Hagner. Hey, buddy, you, you have He's competition. Master. He's good. No, I'm, mas I'm master commander. Of master the, commander of the chapter <laughs> of Santé. Well, Santé, Pat, and thank you for being the amazing friend that you are, the incredible leader that you are, the great family man, and such a great discussion. It's oh. My privilege. And to many more Knights of the Vines. To many more. Au revoir.